Hello, 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 everybody. Hello, viewers. Hello, listeners. Welcome to another edition of the Musings and Music Show. This is the Musings part of it, the more serious side of it. And if you are an avid listener, then two weeks ago, you would have heard me uh, make the promise that I'm keeping right now. I had Miss Julie Jingwa uh, Jackson on the show. She was talking about art. And halfway through that show, I had my current guest come on and she spoke so passionately about a topic that is dear to the hearts of many of us that I promised right there on that show that I'll bring her back to come and talk in a little bit more detail uh, about the topic that she had uh, to discuss, uh, which is talking about a center that is based in Yaoundé. So I'm keeping my promise. I have her here with me. She's been willing to, to call in all the way from Yaoundé, and I'm really pleased to welcome her on board. My name is Egben Biwan Monjimbo, like you didn't know that. And she's going to tell us exactly who she is, her name, and what her center is all about. I am going to learn more and more and more about it as the show goes on. Over to you, Franca. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me on this program. Like you said, I've been willing to join in for a very, very long time. For me, it came as not only a, an agreeable surprise, but as a kind of miracle. So thank you so much for being part of my journey, uh, Auntie Egbe. Thank you so much. My name is uh, Madame Franca Ma'i Sulemyong Akim Boboye. Mm -hmm. And I am the founder and president of the Afro Giftness Center, a center which uh, offers psychosocial support and art therapy to mentally traumatized refugees and conflict affected youths. We help them heal through forgiveness and release through art. Um, I'm also married to Mr. Feishayo Akimbuboye and and also I live in Yaoundé and also in Lagos. Okay, so you, 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 you shuttle between Yaoundé and Lagos. I, I caught your husband's last name and I was saying to myself, I think that's a Nigerian name, maybe a Yoruba name? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Interesting. Uh, I would like, to, I, I'm, I, I'm curious about how you met, because you are in, in Cameroon, or did he, has he lived in Cameroon? Is, has he been living in Cameroon or did you meet him in Nigeria? How did that happen? Just curious. I, I met him in Nigeria when I was going to do my PhD in strategic oh. communications at Unilag. And but I suspended the, the PhD didn't work out. But right. something else did. Oh yes. Um, Look at that. Uh, <laughs> yes. a, a good loving, supporting husband, PhD. Uh, you put them in a scale to where I pick a good, loving, faithful, uh, supportive husband any day. Than have a big old PhD and be miserable and not doing anything worthwhile with one's life, or to have somebody who is not supporting your dreams. So, what is this Afro-giveness thing about? Afro-giveness. What is yes, that? yes, yes. I think the Lord did it for me. Yes, He never makes mistakes. Okay. He never makes mistakes. Everything goes according to His plan. And that PhD, you can still get it down the road. So, not a problem. So that's I believe that's that that is how He ordered your steps. He doesn't make mistakes. So. Go ahead and tell us about this afro giveness thing. What is that concept all about? Okay, afro giveness, as its name indicates, is coined from two words, Africa and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And its aim is to help people who have been traumatized from conflict and also traumatized from, you know, many other things to heal through forgiveness. Also, we believe in championing peace by going through the grassroots because we believe that peace starts in the mind and yes. also ends in the mind. And if you want to create peace in the mind, you need to inculcate in people the values that build peace, such as forgiveness, tolerance, and empathy. And uh, af through our forgiveness, we are not only like um, helping them psychologically, we are not only empowering them psychologically, but also educationally legally and socioeconomically because those are all the aspects that people need to rebuild their life and through our forgiveness we are advocating for a more spiritual um, a more spiritual approach to creating peace because we've noticed that the reason why we, we, we create many peace congresses and many peace conferences and they don't yield sustainable peace is because we've not built in in the minds of people 
the mm -hmm. values that create peace. And that's what our forgiveness is about. And no wonder then you're starting with, with children, because I what the pictures that I saw is children, because some of us, when you get to adulthood, as they say, it's hard to teach an old monkey or uh, new tricks. We are, we are harder yes. and we are more hardened and set in our ways. You talk to somebody, they're like, I don't want to hear it. Oh, they bring out their cutlass, plant them, end of story. You cannot even make a, any headway with them. But children are still moldable. They're still impressionable. They're still, they're much more open uh, to listening to things and being very, first of all, they even have few of the biases that we have because sometimes we are born, I don't, I'm sure you've seen that little video of one little white kid and another little black kid and they're running towards each other and they hug themselves. At that mm -hmm. age, they're not conscious of their skin, of the other things, but then they grow. Then they begin to see that tribe, this tribe, this rich one, this poor one. They begin to, society divides the thing. So I am not surprised now I understand better why you're there yes. with, the, with, the, with, the, with children. Oh, that is an awesome, awesome, awesome idea. So, yes, so exactly. So I would children. ask, uh, my natural question is, where did you come from with this, young as you are? What, why is this? Because we are the ones who have been in this world older, longer, who should say, oh, we have seen all these many conflicts. How did that, how did the idea come about with you in particular? How, why is that the thing? Other people are doing uh, uh, baking cakes, catering, doing other things with their lives. Why would you pick this whole thing to do? Oh, first of all, I think I was born to do this. Right. Um, partly because my middle name, Ma'i, itself means forgive. In my language, Itangikom, Itangikom is a language that is spoken in Belo subdivision in the Northwest region of Cameroon. Mm -hmm. And growing up as a teenager, I experienced bullying from mm -hmm. my peers. And then it made me to experience a lot of depression and trauma and then all ways to heal these wounds do not succeed except forgiveness. And so forgiveness helped me not only understand my name, but also find my purpose. And so sometimes I feel like I owe it to forgiveness to give it to the world because the world needs it. And through yes. Afro, Afro forgiveness for me is like a, a channel or a doorway through which I can fulfill what I've come to see as my purpose. Okay. And I, I think that, uh, there's something in me that has decided not to rest until forgiveness becomes, becomes the norm. Because the reason we, I think the reason we have so many conflicts is because forgiveness is not the norm yet. Right. And mm -hmm. so, yes. And so how do you plan on achieving this? You're working with the, kid, with the children and you hope that when they get to positions where they can, they can have influence, that they would, they would replicate this? Or how do you see it working? How do you see it becoming, a, becoming a, uh, a viable thing that will make the change in society? How do you plan on getting this, achieving this goal of forgiveness so that it can actually have an impact and make the change you would like to see? Yes, exactly, mom, as you insinuated, by working with children, we want to build a new generation. You know. If you want to build a new generation of people who think differently, you must start with the children. That's mm -hmm. one of our approach. If children know that they should forgive their fellow children, their friends, if children know that they should learn tolerance and that they should learn empathy, and if children know that love should not only be preached but practiced, and that diversity should not only be accepted but celebrated, they will, they will even tell their parents. True. They will tell other people. And then another thing we do is we use the universal language of arts. Because art is a language that everybody understands. Right. So um, at the, the Afro Business Center, we received opposite camps of conflicts: Christians versus Muslims who have fled Boko Haram, Anglophones versus Francophones who have fled the ongoing Anglophone crisis, and we've received refugees from seven African countries, some of whom were fighting with each other before they came to Cameroon. Right. And we've met all these people, but one thing we let them know is that uh, no matter their religion, their countries, their ethnic groups, they have been created by one God. Mm -hmm. And the, the Lord wants us to not only love each other, but also live together. Mm -hmm. And that's why there are some 
some days that are very important that we celebrate here at the Afro Forgiveness Center, like the, the International Day of Human Fraternity. The International Day of Human Fraternity, we celebrate it to let people recognize our common humanity mm -hmm. and the oneness of each of us. And so um, this is how we intend to like spread it through sensitizing them. And we believe that they who have been victims of war are best placed to be agents of peace because they know how, what it means when you are robbed of that peace. Oh, so right. they are best placed to tell other people that no, they have, like this. they have experienced like this. themselves. They've seen what it has yes. caused them, what it has caused their families. So they're speaking from a place of, from experience, as opposed to just of us who just watch it on the news, see a thing here mm -hmm. and there, and go on with your life the very next minute. They are, they are the ones who are much more likely, if somebody is sitting down and trying to take decisions and saying, I think we should go to war, they are the ones who are likely to stand up and say, oh, no, 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 let us find a different solution to this thing. I do not want to go through this, what I just went through. So it's an interesting thing how life works. As you said, you think this is your purpose? What you went through, if you had not got that experience, you would not be doing what you're doing now, or you would not be doing it as well. You would not be as passionate. But now you know what it feels like. So now you can know how to go ahead and uh, um, I would say attack the issue from a very, from a more personal point of view. That's really uh, 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 something that's interesting to see. So what is a day in at the Afro Forgiveness Center like an average school? First of all, is it a nine to five, a uh, Monday through Friday? Give us a little bit an idea about how the, is it really like a school? So the kids go, when they say, where do you go to school? You say, I go to school at a forgiveness center or do they go to different Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. A forgiveness is not a school. We are not there yet. Although in future we plan to, to we plan to open a school, but we are not there yet. For the moment, our forgiveness works as an extracurricular center. Okay. So our forgiveness works with uh, children aged seven to uh, twenty seven to nineteen years, and then we also work with young adults aged twenty to thirty five years. Correct. And and we have programs depending on their different ages. Correct. But we work yes. with youths. Yes. Our main targets are young people. Right. And um and they meet on at the Afro Forgiveness Centers on Wednesdays and sometimes on and they wait, they meet on Saturdays, Wednesdays and Saturdays. And they also have tutors and culturally competent art therapists who train them and coach them and engage them. And we, awesome. we made it a center so that they can meet every week because we know that. If you want to inculcate values or sustain values, it has to be done regularly. Yes. And so for the moment, we are still extracurricular, but hopefully in the future, we may grow. Who knows? Uh, I have. Yes, uh, you see, but, but you know- We even have school dropouts. We even have school dropouts among Thank us. You. People who were forced to drop out of school because of conflict. Right. And some of them, we've tried to get them to school. Reintegrate them back into the school system. Yes, and others, is we are trying to get them in, in, to do income generating activities. Yes, because you know very well that if they are they're idle and they're, 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 they're not only idle, but desperate because you need to live, you need to eat, then you start to get into activities that are not healthy and that are not uh, uh, morally viable exactly. and, and get into trouble and it becomes a societal, a, a bigger societal issue than we think. But you know what, what, what I was thinking just as you said that and explained about the fact that it's not a school yet, that they go, I said, but in the end, I know you are aspiring to actually have a school where they will be there full time. But the, but the advantage, the obvious advantage to me with this setup is that what you're teaching them and inculcating in them, well, they need to carry it into society. Like you're saying, they have to influence people. Yes. So if you put them in your own little school there, just like we talk about priests and monks, they have their own value and their own use. But the truth is, if you are going to be there in the little place, then who are you influencing? You're supposed to be the light of the world. You need to be in that world, making the influence there. So in yes, this case, exactly. if we thank God for the for the for the for the for the current situation, because they come to the center, get all those values, get to see get to see all of this, then they take it back to the school that they go to, or the neighborhood that they live in, or the parents that are that are there bitter and angry, and then pass on these values about saying. They say out of the mouths of babies, wisdom comes out. 
So they may actually find mm -hmm. a, a, a father or mom who is saying, I cannot ever forgive this tribe that did this to me and blah, blah. They may say, well, mom or dad, that's what we learned in the center was this or was that. So it's a good thing for them to go out there and shine the little light because as we said, you're doing a fantastic job. It's a very daunting task. I look at you and how young you are and I'm going, my goodness, what a task she took on. So where exactly is this center located in Yaoundé? If somebody knows their family member, because we do, knows their family member who has, is, a, is an IDP there in Yaoundé and would like their, their, their traumatized uh, child to go there to seek therapy, where are they sending them to? Now, the center is located at Mount Bankolo, okay. Mount Bankolo in, ba in Yaoundé. So on the road to, after Radio Ren, and it's popularly known as immobile anglophone because many people have noticed that many anglophone internally displaced persons come there. So it's right. fondly called immobile anglophone. Yeah. And so once we are once you are in the in the junction, you just need to take a a motorbike or even a taxi, or you just walk to the place. Walk as if you are going to the mountain. Mm -hmm. Immediately after the radio station radio rain, then you are going mm -hmm. to find our center. We are just on the road. And when you come to our center, the first person you meet is our human resource officer. And our human resource officer will now direct you to either the psychologist, the person in charge of legal support, the person in charge of um, educational support, right, or the person in charge of socioeconomic integration, depending on your needs and depending right. on how you know, she interprets your needs because some of them don't speak English or French. Right. Some of them don't speak English or French and they are thinking of working on that. And so Having... that's our forgiveness. Right. So the people who work there, so are they volunteering their services pro bono or do you have to pay, pay them? Yeah, the, for the moment we have paid volunteers. Okay. We have paid volunteers and a few paid, a few full-time paid staff. Okay. And then... Uh, we must also, I must also say here that majority of the people that we've hired and the people that are our volunteers are also IDPs and refugees themselves. So, so it right. helps to give them employment. Yes. And then it also helps to like, you know, keep the circle going. They yeah. are the ones who can best understand mm -hmm. other refugees and other internally displaced persons. And, and that is even who the children themselves will trust better. You are coming because yes. you have somebody coming there who doesn't even has never gone through any kind of hardship, telling you how you should be patient and everything. You are rolling your eyes and going, mm -hmm. "What do you know about it?" But when the person <laughs> says, "I too, I'm sitting here. I do not know where my family is, or I have gone through this. I went through the bush and all of these things and had all of these things." You listen, to just like with anything, you listen to them better. Somebody is telling you, "Oh, you can overcome this thing," and you're looking at them and going, "What experience do you have in the matter?" So they tell you that, okay, I too am here. I'm telling you to hang in there as a widow that is going to be okay. If it's another widow speaking, that widow is going to listen. If not, you're sitting down there, you have had no problem. You have your family, everything is full. You come and say, tie her, tie her. They're like, what do you know about the matter? <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> what yes, do you know? but then the pain the I'm open up to you. Please, it just like, open up and like, you. yes. So this, so this is really something. And you've been able to get, because as you said, it employs the people. And then it also puts them, they're the best qualified to talk to these children and reach them and even just maybe hug them and understand them. But sometimes for some, for some the, the beginning place is even, as you said, you're the one who used the word empathy. The rest of us can come at it with sympathy where we feel, oh, we're so sorry about this, but we don't know that we don't know the experience. The empathy comes from the person who actually understands the thing and just knows the pain, who can even look at the child and say, I know what this one is going through today. And we even just give them a hug and, and encourage them. So do you see, do you, are you noticing results? Are you seeing something that tells you, hmm, this thing is yielding the fruits that we... Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. I'm noticing results. And then sometimes some of them drop anonymous notes of thank you. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, when did these anonymous notes are the things that taught us the most because... You don't even know who has dropped the note and the person doesn't even put his name there. And then some of the messages are, seem to come from very little children. And that what, that's what makes it even more touching because no children cannot craft words and then 
the way adults do. But the child just finds a way to say thank you. They speak from so, their heart. Yes, they speak from their heart and without any intention to be known or have Correct. spoken. Correct. All those things really, really touch us. And then many of them, the fact that many of them look forward to coming. You know, like it's not like in school where you are, you are forced to go. You mm -hmm. must, you know, if you don't go, you are going to, your marks are going to do this. And right, it's not an exam. You are going the to discipline. Do. Yes. This one, they come, volunt they, they come voluntarily. They mm -hmm. come voluntarily to the Afro Forgiveness Center. And some of them are just so regular. For many of them, the Afro Forgiveness Center has become a home away from home, but mm -hmm. they have made new friends and they have learned tolerance, they've learned empathy, they've exercised their artistic talents, and they've realized that peace is not social for all, irrespective of background. And I believe that, you know, one, 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 one thing, Afro forgiveness too has taught me a lot because I've also realized that many of us, we have these parks inside us. We all have the values inside us and we, just, we are just looking for some confirmation. Right. We're just looking for some confirmation. These people have taught me empathy too as well because you know, the way I relate with them, I don't relate with them as people that I'm helping or something of that sort. I relate with them as partners. Mm -hmm. The people that are helping me and I'm helping them. Right. You're, you're helping you're, me you're, to fulfill my purpose. Correct. They're you're, helping me to fulfill they're, they're, my they're, purpose. Like a kind of job, job. You say, I'm here to do this job. This is my job. From nine o'clock to 10 o'clock, end of when it used to 10 o'clock, clock. They stop the thing. Well, everybody go on home kind of a thing. It, 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 it is, as you're saying, it's your purpose and you are living it. You're actually living it. Yeah. You're living it out. It's what you're actually yeah. actually doing. And they sense that the kids are not, um, they may be young there and influenceable, but they're not dumb. Yeah. They're, 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 they're just on perspicas. They can, they can perceive and they can see. They, will, they can tell when you're doing something, there's an agenda yeah. there. Or when you're doing it, it's because it's your job. Oh, you're doing it because your soul is in it. Where you can even stop whatever you're doing down there, just give them a hug and nothing is happening. You're not you're actually teaching something and they can tell that you're not doing it. It's not a paycheck issue, even if you get a salary. It's not a paycheck issue. It's I am in this thing for it. The same way you can tell a, a doctor who has sympathy for his patient, the way he talks to them, the way he treats them. And the one who went and got a PhD as is a doctor and everything, but totally heartless and is not doesn't have a calling for it. You can tell the difference in mm -hmm. of them talking to you. Somebody who's doing it, it's my job, it's my job, it's my job. And somebody who's doing it from their soul. And that is something that is so much needed in our world, like you say. Interesting question I'm going to ask you. So how do you define forgiveness? So like how, okay, now you have the Hutu and the Tutsi. You have the Boko Haram person and the one that hurt them. You have the person in the, so. What would you, how would you define forgiveness? What should they do? Should you act like nothing ever happened? In other words, in the school, do they talk about the issue? Like the editable in conflict, or you just say, I take it from where you are. You've come to me and I'll just teach about peace. Or do you go there? Do you go there and discuss that issue? Yes, we discuss with them one-on-one -on -one to okay. know exactly what, is pending them and you know trauma is a little bit cunning and complicated okay. you know partly because uh people have ego issues so right. sometimes you're traumatized by one thing so mm -hmm. you give the impression that you're traumatized by another or you're angry with another thing and then you take it out on other people correct and so when you're dealing with traumatized people you must be very patient even in how you talk about forgiveness Mm -hmm. even in how you talk about forgiveness and us we measure on the fact that forgiveness will help you that's what we measure on you are not forgiving for another person you are not forgiving for the person who hurts you you are not forgiving for some other person you are forgiving for your own self for your own peace well for your own happiness for your own well-being mm -hmm. and then we even tell them that the best revenge is forgiveness Mm -hmm. And then we also bring in uh, this, uh, this aspect of purpose, that nothing happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's not for nothing that this happened to you, and now you've relocated to Yaoundé. Now you must learn how to speak French. You don't know what added value has come from that. Mm -hmm. You make new friends, and who knows, you've come here to the Afro Forgiveness Center. Who knows where you're going to go from there? 
For instance, I was talking to them um, recently about this interview that we had. I told them how Miss Julie Jackson had come. In fact, I didn't even know she was going to come until she came. It still seemed somehow miraculous to me. So ever since I started this Our Forgiveness, I'm amazed at how the dots just seem to connect to a point where I've instead grown more grateful for the fact that I was bullied in my teenage years. So I always tell them this story, that I'm grateful for everything that hurts me. Because if it did not hurt me, I wouldn't have found, I wouldn't have become so deep that I would find purpose in mm -hmm. trying to overcome the same thing that hurts me. Exactly. So exactly. we've realized that the thing that makes people forgive is when you help them realize that that same thing that is hurting you, you could transform that particular pain into purpose. Mm -hmm. And we tell them, transform your trauma into treasure, transform your wounds into wisdom. You know, and so when they realize that that same thing, happen for a reason and they could actually use it for their benefit it, it makes them less it make them naturally less instead of being angry and being correct. vengeful towards the person who hurt them. or bitter <clears throat> because that's, that's another yes. thing that stops people from making any progress you are sitting there bitter acrimoniously yeah you cannot you cannot you cannot blossom you cannot fulfill any purpose in this world except another negative one with that kind of mindset you go out and you look at the world in a very, totally, very totally different negative lens. Mm -hmm. And if you say, okay, this thing is instead an asset that I've got that I can actually use. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yes. And I keep saying it. I am Christian, so I say it and I say it all over that Bible. There's nobody there who really became anything who did not go through issues. And my, 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 my go-to example is always Joseph. You get a dream and they tell you that you're going to be somebody great. Yeah? The, your, your brothers are going to bow down to you. Your parents, they had all of these dreams with the sheaves bowing down, the sun, moon, and stars bowing down. Then instead, you are put in a pit, you sit in that pit, then they take you out and sell you into slavery. Then from slavery, you go to prison. You're like, what happened to that dream that I was told? Nothing seems to be happening good at all. Maybe I would have been better. What did I do? What, what did I do? Then you even go to the prison and you help these people and you tell them that when things become good for you, please go and Put in a good word for me. They go and they forget you. And you just lean down there and say, what is this? But then all of that was his path. Preparation, preparation, preparation. All the patience he needed, he learned. All the, uh, the wisdom he needed, he learned in that journey. Exactly. The, by the time you were looking for somebody who was going to be the real prime minister of Egypt, he was like the obvious candidate because of exactly. all that stuff. The other people are sitting down there, no, they have not learned anything, gone through life so easily. You don't have any, you don't have much to give. So usually when you find mm -hmm. someone who is wise, how did he get wise? Experience is showing him pepper. <laughs> like this. That is how he you don't, you don't get wise. Yes. You sit down there, everything was given to you. When do you learn how to hustle? You don't know. So everybody's pain. I like the, the wonderful poetic way you put it. I cannot even remember it to repeat it, like you said it, about taking your wounds and make it, transforming them into wisdom about taking your, we have the common one here, they say when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Make lemonade. Correct, about, about <laughs> yes. the whole thing. Yes, in, in, in Nigeria, they say when life show you pepper, make pepper soup. Amen, <laughs> amen. At least you have the pepper, pepper there, use it. And, and, and I tell people to say, look, no waste your suffer. That, you, 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 you've gone and you've suffered through something, I beg find a reason, some, some way to make that thing count. If not, you've suffered for totally, Nothing. So it's all, all it is that you have there in your little bag is so, suffer and tears. If you had this thing happen to you, that was such a trauma, and you cried and cried and cried, at least. Now when somebody else, it happens to somebody else, they say, my sister, come here, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. The day will soon come when this thing, you, you, you would look past this thing, it gets better. So you can actually help somebody else go through that thing, or you may tell somebody who you see going down the path of mistakes that you made, and say, I bet, blow your whistle and say, stop. Stop, Mama. If you continue down this, yes. this is what's going to happen to you. Look at me, I can tell you, because that's how I too went down the thing and it happened. So that's one thing why I like this country and then what is happening now with you. People take their whole associations, the uh, association of mothers whose children were murdered. Okay, your child has been murdered. What a terrible, terrible stress. I mean, big fat scar. You can sit in your house now and cry till God calls you home. Or when the thing happens, you can go and tell that other mother and hug her and say, Mama, you see, I went through this 
and you don't put it to good use and then go now and, and, and have legislation passed. You go to the court and say, let us pass this rule that does this, let us do. And they listen to you more because you've gone through it. Like for me to just jump up and say, I'm a legislator, make this rule. Instead, they, they call them to come and testify in Congress, come and speak, come and say, and they're the ones that they listen to because they know that they, they know what they're talking about. So it is an amazing thing you're doing. I'm just looking at you, I'm just marveling at how- Oh, thank you. Yes, and how so, so I look at the structure. I think it's time for us to show people a little bit of what you're talking about there, about this center. Let me see if I can find some pictures and you walk us through so people can see. Uh, because I'm about to ask them to donate and you tell us how we can do that. And I would like them to see what it is that they would be donating to if they did. Let me see if I can find, I know that I had closed this thing before and now I came back on. So I may have to do this real quick to get the uh, pictures, back, those pictures back that I had to show. Just a second. I think I'll get them from here. Uh, here. And then I can come on back to us here and try to share my, my screen. Now it should be there. Here it is. Okay. Do you see the pictures? Oh, yes, yes, it yes. Either. So you want to give us a little walkthrough. I'm going to just click on them and you can give us a quick rundown of what's going on in each one. I try to make it a little bigger. Is this you? Right here in the green dress? In the first picture, yes. Yes, this is first you right picture, In the green dress, yes. Right. Yes. So what's, going on, what's going on in this picture? They seem to be singing. Yes, yes. In this picture, we were singing. Um, uh, with internally displaced persons, we're launching the Afro-Giveness Center. This is the one we're launching the center. It was still very, very new. New. And so it was not painted. Right. It was it not really... painted. They were no, the windows were not uh, good. Many things were not good. And it was not flawed. Right. I actually did that painting myself. Look at that. <laughs> actually, got, got, got to the ladder yeah, so... and painted the thing yourself. Yeah, so I always go back to these pictures to see how far we've come. You've come, yes. Okay, so you can see the difference now. Wall is painted. Yeah. Uh, there's the, uh -huh. their desks. Who yes, they are, yeah, they're having a session. We call okay. them sessions, not necessarily okay. trainings. They're having a session on storytelling. Okay. Yes, we have one project known as the Purpose Storytelling Project, okay. where student children come together to just tell stories. The stories may not necessarily be their stories. Right. They may just be stories like the, the, the ones you we know, how somebody learned something at the end, how somebody, you know, as a way of entertaining. And right here, right here, we're having a mindfulness session, you know, mindfulness, right. breathing exercises. Okay. Yoga and so on. Those are some of the things that we practice at the Forgiveness Center so that we can right. manage emotional shock. Right, I can see that this one is wearing his country clothes right there. He's from the Northwest region. Yes. Right. <laughs> so this and is poet. We have, we have another um, project on poetry, called the uh -huh. uh, Fraternity Poetry Project, mm -hmm. where children come to write poems and because so on. Some like of them are interested in storytelling, others yes. in poetry. Yep, you're going to have a bunch of writers and poets and people come out of this, musicians, artists, and like room yes. of coming out of this. Okay, now I see some people with a hijab right there. Uh, yes. so they, they, and this is one from the, from the northern regions of Cameroon. Yes, and some of them are refugees from Niger, Chad, Central African Republic. And uh, yes, Niger, Chad, Central African Republic and Nigeria. Correct. And so this is the Afro Giftness Choir. We have a choir, oh. this, which is an interfaith choir made wow. up of Christian, Wow. And Muslims who have fled conflict and have experienced trauma, different kinds of trauma. So when we bring them together, they use music to process that trauma and also use music to advocate for peace. Look at that. So this is where they meet uh, at the Afro Giftness Center. Um, so yes, the, yes the, the music instructor right there teaching them the songs. Yes. Oh. And the music instructor himself is an internally displaced person. I was just going to ask that very question. Very yes. putting his skills to good use there. This one is maybe yes. reading or storytelling because somebody is reading from a book. Yes, they actually wrote songs and they have to read them. And then this one, we are doing a bibliotherapy session with children who are under 
eight years. Okay. And this, some of them have been orphans during conflict. Yeah. And so someone comes and then reads stories to them. That's what's stories going. about love, stories about hope. So they can, they, they, can, they can get out of the, oh, look at these three sitting there and they have yes. the book and they're trying to read. This one is following the reading with her finger. Uh, oh. Yes. Yes. Wow. Many of them, no children. One of the ways to reach children is through stories. Right. Because that's how they go and escape into a different world, different from the one that they're living in, which is, which is sometimes not so, not so pleasant. Okay, here comes mm -hmm. dancing. Exactly. Some serious dombolo is about to go on here. This is <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's still the choir. They meet okay. every Saturday. Anyway, oh, some right. people are interested. While well, some are dancing, others are singing, singing and then others and... are doing storytelling and others are doing, no. So, so everybody has a place for their own gift. Yes. Everybody, everybody chooses his preferred art. Correct. Look at this, right here, you have some boards, you have some tables there and Storytelling. Things. Correct. Yes. And they're listening and they're all interested in listening. Okay, I see them. Mm -hmm. So there's a little match pass going on. It says together as one fraternité, uh, tolerance, and things like uh -huh. that. So what was this matching going? Where was, where was this happening? Okay, like I said, we organize International Day of Human Fraternity okay. every year. We want them to know that no matter our races, our religions, our cultural heritages, we are all just human beings. Mm -hmm. And so we should treat each other as such. And then we believe that if we, if we actually inculcate, but also promote the idea of human fraternity, there will be no conflict and wars because we'll see ourselves as brothers and, and sisters, not as enemies. You know, this otherhood concept is what breeds conflict. And want to stop that not only in Cameroon but also in Africa. Yeah, because that is the story of the continent. We've had Liberia where there was those kind of issues, uh, uh, Burundi and Rwanda. Uh, we have them everywhere where we have our, tribe, our, our tribal things and there's conflicts for along various different lines. So they they marched through the city, or because I see now they've started. I see the big poster. Uh, yes, they, mm -hmm. yes, they marched through the city, but. Hopefully in future, we are going to make it more countrywide. Yes. For the moment, it's just been in Yaoundé. Uh -huh. And they really love the work. I mean, you cannot imagine. They keep asking, when is the next fraternity work? We can't wait for the next fraternity work. Yes. <laughs> so when they do this, do passers-by stop and ask? Is it yes, the yes. media? OK. Yes, that's, that's the point, actually. The passers-by can see. Even passers-by who don't follow the media, they can right. be able to see the messages. Right. Of fraternity. Okay. Oh, now I see some sports going on here. Somebody is really doing some serious thing there. I see the, the water and everything. Is this what 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 session yes. is on here? So actually, us we've been blessed to have some volunteers who just come yeah. around. This mm -hmm. is uh, this the the lady here in black. She's mm -hmm. a volunteer from New York. She found out about our forgiveness and then she came to volunteer to teach dance. Zumba oh, wow. and dance, and so right. this was one of this was one of her sessions. sessions. Yes. yes, I can imagine how excited the girls were. Oh, look at this one! He is just killing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then this another this another volunteer, another volunteer right. who came from Russia. She's okay. she's a Russian, but she lives in Dubai. So right. she also came to. She found out about us on Instagram, and she came wow. to volunteer her time and also her resources. So help me. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then here is one another happy group right here. Uh of, ch of, of children. Do you see them? What was going on in this? Yes, one? yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Miss Julie Jackson, who came from the right, UK. Right. And, and she's an artist and an art therapist. Oh, she right. was so helpful. And you know, many of these children, once once someone comes from somewhere to see Different. them. Yes. They are always so happy and excited. excited. Like you cannot even imagine. I can mm. I I I I just can only really just guess how it is. What was going on? I see some this looks like an official. I was this, this was a drawing when they added to that they could draw because before we had been drawing with water paints and okay. colors. They actually learned that they could draw with crayons. Draw. And yeah. this is every year we organize an event known as Tolerance Show. With, in partnership with UNESCO, 
I see. Yeah, I so see. this woman is a deputy secretary general of the National Commission of UNESCO. So we organize this event so that these children come and sing and dance. What is, what uh, is in the, front of? What is the person? Do you remember the person's name? You mean the lady of the National lady, Commission? Lady, yes. Yeah. She's Dr. Ekwoge. Ha. This is Beth Ekwogeson. Yes, yes. let, you see, this is somebody from the same school I went to. I just looked at the face now and said, "Isn't this Beth Ekwoge?" She was Beth Ekwogeson <laughs> as a, as a, her maiden name. Just now, I'm like, hey, she was. We went to Sika Baptist College. She was a year ahead of me in Sika Baptist College. Believe it or not. Wow. I just <laughs> found out, and I think I remember somebody saying she had been appointed to this position. I think last year or something. And this yes, is, yes. In fact, if I click on this thing, because my pictures are sometimes connected. If I click on this picture, it may actually bring another picture of her. Oh, but I don't know. Let me see what happens here. Uh, let me let me click on this one. This isn't this her. Can you see? Yes. That's better. Yes. That's a different picture that I have of her. When she was appointed, somebody sent me this picture to, to, to share. What is more? Oh, yes, she's a same person. Is her? <laughs> wow. This is so how it, it's saying. Uh, so we were, this is when I was reporting on it on my on my blog, Sika Pride, saying she had just been appointed because somebody sent me the picture with that good news that she had been appointed. Look at this. I'm even going totally off topic because I'm so excited to see this now. <laughs> This is her and one of her classmates. This is her here on the left. And this is another classmate of her of hers there on the right. My wow. goodness, what a small world. Let me let yeah, me understand. she has been a yes, she has Sorry. been a mother figure Look throughout at her. our journey. I Look mean, she has that. been advising me, advising us. Ah, this is something. Look at that. I just saw the thing, and like, even though she's speaking, I'm like, this face is a face I know. I cannot wait to contact her and say, guess what? I spoke to Franca. <laughs> and let's do this. This is this is this is something. And then this is somebody here. Was it the, was it an award ceremony going on here or something? I've, I've moved to a new picture. Do you see this one? It looks like the same a UNESCO day or something. Yeah, this is quite yes. Every year we do uh, when we do all this poetry, storytelling, music, wow. dance, drama at the end of the year. We crown it on International Day of Tolerance at the Tolerance Show at the National Commission of UNESCO. Wow, look at that. So this is a Togolese refugee right. performing a song. Wow. This was uh, this guy comes from the north from Boko Haram. He fled, right. his family fled Boko Haram. Right. So look at that. Hard work. This and this school I'm talking about is the same school that, that Julie, that's where I met Julie too. That's where we that's where we we we, we oh. met. Yes. At Seca Baptist College. At Baptist College. <laughs> that, that, Julie, I think, was in form two or so when I was in form four, and this one would have been in form five. The Bertha was a year ahead of me, and Julie was like a couple of years behind me. This is interesting. And I see the other group now performing here too. I think maybe they're doing the yes. poetry. No, it's singing. Singing. They're singing a song about child's education. Wow. Wow, this one has been moved to tears. If you can see this one, or is she just being shy? I think she has received an award or what is going on here. I see them wiping yes, their she eyes. moved to tears. She's an IDP and then she won the poetry prize. Oh, look at that. And she didn't know she could win the poetry prize. She didn't yeah. know she was a good poet. <laughs> yes, these are things you never forget. And this is you and uh, Julie there, uh, the pictures that she took. And that is the part of that Julie saw that, that, that when she was there, I can see them proudly displaying their art. And this is when they're sitting down and actually doing the drawing itself. And this, this little guy right here, I, I'm still amazed mm -hmm. at this kind of talent. Look at those lines, those lines right there. You have an architect in the making right there. Yes. An architect in the making right there. It looks so beautiful. And okay, that's Julie is instructing somebody. Now I want us to listen a little bit if we can hear what the uh, students had to say, especially this one. Let me see if we can start and see whether we can hear what she had to say. But she spoke really well. It's spinning for a bit, so I'm going to give it some time and see if uh, we get to hear the sound. Maybe I'll refresh so we can actually hear the little girl uh, speak. She spoke so well. Let me see if this will work better. Okay, I need all the, all the sound was gone. 
Okay, so, let us... my name is Nila Mercy. Um, I want to first of all start by thanking all my friends in Wales for giving me this opportunity to feel like I was not open to the world. Coming away from the eating and the people in English because um, like, I have had open mind about so many things, especially the culture, the 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 religion, the language, so many things. So it also gives me let me make sure. Can you hear what she's saying? Are you able to hear Franca what she's saying? Yes. Okay, let me continue. So I'm just okay. here. Okay, let me continue what you were saying. Mm -hmm. It's also the opportunity to think and dream big because at first I just used to think engineer in Cameroon, making it, but now I'm really dreaming of seeing myself somewhere like in Wales, and I'm very excited. So thank you very much, and I hope you also enjoy it. Um, Awesome. The child is talking, it's just that you can he see, hear that it's a child's voice. But the majority of what she's saying there is where there's life, there's there's this. Yeah. It's it's an amazing thing to hear. And I'm and I'm kind of sorry that she has had to go through what has put her at this point where she is wise beyond her years. But that's the thing. She she this, this kind mm -hmm. of person is the one that is going to go and be a catalyst for change wherever she goes. When I hear her say, now, because of this, I can now dream big. I just used to see myself in a little corner okay. here. Uh, but now I think I can dream. That is something money cannot buy. It's something you cannot, it's something you give a yeah. child that is priceless. It's just invaluable. You cannot quantify it because that child will end up being something that this little experience has given them. Mm -hmm. And mean? everything starts with a dream. Yes. If a child cannot dream, that is that is the, the, the world is dark and you might as well just lock the key, throw it away and say, just sit down, wait for the day God calls you home. Because that's what makes us get up every morning, get up in the morning, you open your eyes and you say, I'm going to go on out and do this and do that. That motivates you. A, a patient who is sick but has hope and sees themselves well and doing something else is likely to heal faster and better than a person who says, my own no day, this is the death has come and take it. You will go far even sooner than that, <laughs> than that as opposed to having the, 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 the courage and somebody comes alongside you and tells you, you can do it. She says, look at her, they're saying one day, maybe she'll end up in Wales and she just might. She just might. Exactly. If she does not end exactly. up in Wales itself, someplace else that she would want to go to, but you just opened up doors, horizons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she has actually put something into the air. Right. Mm -hmm. just put something there, that, is, that is her wish and her hope. And somebody, maybe even somebody watching this may make it happen. So I have shown everybody all of this. And so now the time has come to what I really wanted to do this show for. Let us see how is it that somebody who has listened, who has heard this, who has been touched, who has been moved, how can they help? Is it material things like do you go donate chairs? Do you go donate water? Do you donate art materials? Do you donate your time? Do you donate Cash, what is it? So how can we help? Oh, help, you can help in so many different ways, so many different ways. And then no help is too small. No help is small. It can be materially, mm -hmm. like some people have sent us books. It can be uh, technically, like you give your time and you, you, sh you share your talents, like how Miss Julie Jackson did. It can be financially some people have sent us money mm -hmm. it can be by the way let me jump in real quick to say somebody even already through this, even, even what even what you're doing uh, yeah. is very 
It's very sorry. Touching. It may go a long way. Someone somewhere will know about what we're doing. And this little girl, if she sees, if she, if she hears, because I'll tell her that she was on radio. <laughs> if she hears she was on radio, it may inspire her. Yes, that little girl is going, going, going to be on YouTube like too. She's going to be on YouTube, uh -huh. going to be on the radio, and then on YouTube there forever. And just not to cut you short, but already the time when you came as part of Julie's show and spoke, somebody actually called me from Dallas, Texas, in this country. You could tell, I could hear her, she was driving. She had put the radio show on and was listening as she was driving. She called. I said, good morning. What's going on, sis? She says, no, I just heard that what you're doing right there. And, I'm, and I want to donate. I would like to donate. This past weekend, she was at a funeral. And so she's been busy. She, I know that what her word is her bond. She will already from that last show. That, way, that oh. came the Julie show, she, she called me and she said that, and I'm going to remind her. And I know that's why this is this is part of she's oh. waiting to hear what exactly should she do, how should Thank she do. Thank you so much. Yes, she actually called. I don't want to mention. <laughs> Thank her you name. so what, much. She did not give me the permission to mention her name, but she said she was she was going to donate, and I knew she will. So other people like her are listening. You said they can go, and I know her friends in Yaounde there, associations there in Yaounde who are looking to do something for a, just a good deed. Now they know they can go donate stuff or donate their time. They are there, they are lawyers there. They are there, they are very different, very many different careers. They can go there and talk to the children yes. and inspire them to, to want to be this tech, this professional, this one. Um, so they can do like a career day. And then if somebody wants to donate the, the actual money now, like this friend of mine, how are we going to get it to you? What's the best? How does that work? Okay, for money, it's just to, we have a bank account. It's just to send it through our, I could just send our bank info and they could send it to our bank account via wire transfer. We, we for the moment, we don't yet have um, all these cash link. up things. And go fund me, go, go fund me because have, yeah, um, to get the go fund me link, you need to be registered in America or we'll have an right. American oh, bank yeah. and we yes. don't have that. that. Is that is true. That is true. <laughs> we don't have that yet. Yes, we'll figure it out then. We'll figure it out. Maybe through through whoever it is that that you might know or trust out here that can do that can set it up and we can donate there because that's how people tend to donate out here uh, with their credit cards and their that kind of a thing. But we'll figure it yes, out. Absolutely. There's no way we can have people who are willing to give and then we say, well, thank you that you want to give, but. We don't know how we can take this money. No, I take it and I'll figure out how to. Yeah, there are many ways to give. We've actually received money from. We've actually received money from abroad via wire transfer, wire and transfer. also via bank via via bank deposit. Okay. And okay. yes, we have a, del a dollar account so that the okay. bank deposit is quite easy. And you don't have that information like right now, do you? Like, is it is it is it? Do you have it with um? within reach like now right there with you that we can read the numbers yeah, have, yeah we have our bank account right now you do and i'll take a i'll take a pen and i write it down as you say it so that when the when okay. this is read somebody who only listens to this and doesn't come back to anywhere can still know if you have it handy uh, uh like i start with the name of the bank what bank is it okay united bank plc i'm trying to just really quick real quick sorry i should have uh, alerted you that we're going to want to do that and have we're going to want to donate and i, I know that we can find ways because that's the bottom line do, does uh, our forgiveness have a a website yes okay we have our website www.afforgiveness.org all right let me now i will have a yeah. friend that work let me let me write that one www. Still, it's still a small website but we're planning to make it big so that we can showcase all the works right no they've seen quite a few pictures now so now they just need to go if they go they go to this website and they can at least just see even just the bank information there for now that's really all that they will need so go to www.afrogiveness afro is like afro like an afro on your head a f r o yeah i v e n e s s afrogiveness link merged yes. word, dot org and yes and see how, yes to, to how to donate she already gave uh, directions about where to where the place is actually located. It, even I myself had um, Mong Bankolo there. If you're going to actually go check it out your own self, physically, because you live in Yaoundé, that's what you might do. And trust me, if you contact me, I will find a way to put you through. If that is how you, the only thing you can remember is to call me and say, 
uh, or contact me through Seca Pride or through this show, whichever way, I too will find a way of putting you in contact with her so we can figure it out. If Julie could come from Wales and come find her there in Yaoundé, so can we, so can we. So we have had uh, uh, the different various ways. She has said it to you, nothing is too small, no form of donation. Even for, I keep, I keep on saying, even the ones who cannot donate, don't want to go and they don't feel like they have something that they can go and share academically mm -hmm. or career-wise, wish them well and pray, you know? I'm sure maybe, maybe mm -hmm. if I don't know if people may need things like clothing and shoes. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. They need clothing, they need shoes, they need bags. You know, we actually had, um, I don't know if I could show you this um, because Ooh. I'm in, in our office now. We have yeah. students. Mm -hmm. Go on, go on. Yeah, these are books that students donated. Yeah, like, we have, we've had students who have donated their, their used textbooks and school shoes and things like that for, for these other refugees. We ran the campaign known as the Purpose Students for SDG campaign. And we're able to set up a library for those who cannot afford to get textbooks. So I just wanted to, I was trying to show this to, to, to reiterate that nothing is too small. Yes. And we've also had people who have called via Zoom to talk to, to some of them. Right. And what you know, it could talk? go a long way, just like that, that little girl from me. Yes. She, she was talking like that from an online exchange with students in Wales yes. via Zoom. So many things. Look at me here who is quite a teacher. No, that's an idea. Anything can go a very long way and right. you don't know how fast something can go. You never, mm -hmm. I, you never know. So that has given me an idea. I could have one of my classes when school resumes, just say, do the same thing that we're doing here and just wave at them and say, here, where are you from? We're here in Charlotte, North Carolina and we wish you well. Yes. You can go, in my day, we're having pen pals. You wrote a letter, the letter went to the mail for I don't know how many months before it got to where it was going. This one, you can actually mm -hmm. see them real people. That is awesome. I didn't even think about that. So everybody who's hearing this, if you want to, to do that, contact her through this website, set up, set up something viable. And there's so many ways we can help. So I thank you because we will not know. There are people who feel these things. They see the stories, they hear them, and they wonder, what can I do? Now, if you found one very viable, very life-changing, palpable way that you can help and make the difference, a difference in the child, in the life of a child. Investing in a child is the, that's investing in the future. That's investing in the future. The same things that you don't like that you see, oh, the children of today are terrible. But what did you do to try to save one and prevent them from joining the terrible side? If that's like, this is it's one or the other. If you don't nurture them in a certain way, the tendency is for them to go down that other way through, and then it will be our fault, kind of, because we never tried. They were there open, Somebody is doing the actual work. Look at Franca here, is the one who's there standing on the ladder and painting the walls. Maybe you can go help to do that painting. Maybe you can go buy the paint. Maybe you can go do, find out what the needs are. Asha told us there about shoes, clothing, books. Please, please, please. There's nothing like doing something for somebody who you don't expect anything in, back in return except their own progress, their own well being. And so it's not all the time that you go give something, you, Christmas comes, you give a gift to your child. It's a good thing, but um, you haven't really done much outside of your own little circle. When you give to children like this, whom you may never ever meet in this life physically, they may never ever know you, it goes a long way. And you can make a difference in the child. Tomorrow that child will be standing on the podium one day talking about how I'm the minister of social and so thing. I started off like this in this place. And instead of getting bitter, I'm a far better person. So Franca, I want to just thank you, thank you, thank your husband, and just encourage you to keep on doing what you're doing because it's making a difference. Uh, thank you so much, ma. <laughs> your own, your own, you. your own, your own revenge to the whoever it is that was that was. I hate to use a, a, a strong word, stupid enough to bully you. They should look at you now and see what it is that you have. <laughs> and I wish everybody well, but I'm not. I cannot guarantee that they themselves were doing the bullying. Have gotten to anywhere. So that is the thing. You have pushed through all of that and made something very, very worthwhile out of your own life and then the lives of so many others. So I'm very, very grateful that you have taken time out of what is, I know must be a very busy schedule. It's late for you out there now to come and sit down and do this. And I'm going to pray and hope that what this time we've sat here doing all of this, 
has given our listeners and viewers ideas. Please do something, donate, uh, volunteer, and let's help these children who have gone through such trauma through no fault, absolutely no fault of theirs. They're innocent victims in all of this. And, and learn, we, we, and then we adults can learn for the whole, from the whole forgiveness thing that, that she has uh, mentioned there, that heals you first before it even does makes any difference to the other person who may have hurt you to just move on and stop being bitter where you get frozen in your bitterness and cannot be helpful to the world. What is your last word, Franca? I'd like you to close out. What do you, what's your last word to all of us listening and viewing? Um, I'd like to say thank you so much. Thank you so much, Auntie Egbe, for this opportunity. I never saw it coming and I'm so grateful it has come. And I don't even know what, what to start saying. I'm even short of words, but from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. Thank you for having interest in what we do. Thank you to Thank you to everybody who shares our values about forgiveness. Thank you to everybody who wants to contribute in advance, either directly or indirectly through prayers. Thank you so much. All I have to say is thank you. Thank you to the Almighty Father. Amen. From whom all gifts come and to whom all thanks is given. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. I did not add anything to that. That's such a wonderful benediction. Uh, doxology or whatever they call them, the, the, the people in theology called it. I don't want to add anything to that because that is a perfect way to end it. Thank you so much. The pleasure is mine. The pleasure and honor and privilege are all mine. I, I am blessed to, to be a part of this. So thank you and I'll be talking to you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And regards to your husband <laughs> and everybody out there. Give the children, I said, bizu, bizu, bizu to all of them. Uh, they will hear, they will hear. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right.